Hey everyone, Rachel here from Curly Quilt. I'm coming today with sort of, I guess, a ranty video. I don't know. Um, just needed to make something. I had posted a couple of videos and they were going really well and then I feel like I just hit this brick wall. Um, which actually happens a lot for me, personally. Um, I have ADD and so getting things accomplished can be a struggle sometimes and it's not just you know things that I don't want to do or chores or anything like that but it's pretty much anything in my life um, even if it's something that I want to get done like quilting and sewing I get to a point where I come to a standstill whether it's like creatively I feel you know like I don't feel like any desire to keep going with it or, you know, I, I come into my sewing room and I know, you know, I have 20 different UFOs that I could work on and I have no motivation, I guess, or drive. I, it's not even that I don't have motivation. I have the motivation. I just can't, I can't do it. I don't know. It's so, it's so weird. And I feel like a lot of other sewers are the same way, uh, especially quilters. I actually happen to work in the sewing industry as my regular nine to five job. And so I get to speak to a lot of quilters and sewers. And you know, the, you hear a lot of the same things like, oh, you know, my fabric stash is so huge or I have so many projects already. Why am I buying more stuff for this new one? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can definitely relate. Like I relate a hundred percent. You know, I have a whole shelf full of fabric that I could sew through. I have tons of projects that I've started in the last few years that I could easily just sit down and finish if I, you know, took the time to do it. And it's really frustrating. It's more frustrating than anything to have something that you want to accomplish and not have the, feel like you don't have the capabilities. And so I think I kind of wanted to rant about, you know, when you're in that, that stage of a project or you know, you're just kind of in between things and you're like, I don't know what to do next. I, I feel like being creative, but I don't know even how to start being creative at this point. Um, well, one of the things I'm going to suggest is don't buy something to motivate you. And uh, this is a little bit of the pot calling the kettle black because I love to buy stuff to motivate myself, especially fabric. I love buying fabric. It's, it's fun, especially... Um, in the world that we live in today with quilting cottons, I mean, there's just some really beautiful, beautiful fabric, really cute designs. There's colors you can choose from. Any kind of image or picture or pattern that you can imagine, it exists on fabric. And so that's a lot of fun, right? And we're creative people. And so we see these things, uh, we see the bright colors and we just get, or ooh, we're attracted to them. And then we get into this like frenzy where like, if I don't buy this right now, I may never see it again. And while this is true, you don't need it. You don't need it to be motivated. You don't need it to be creative. And uh, the reason why I felt kind of sparked by this is I was watching um, a fellow quilter, Pat Sloan, she does a lot of like fireside chats and uh, she has like this little like three tiered rolling cart. I think a lot of people call them rolling assistants. You get them at Michael's, Joann's, and they're like the metal with the two handles on the side and they have the three tiers. You know, they come in really cute colors like turquoise I think is a big popular color. Red is another one. And while watching her video, you know, she, she uses hers to kind of set up what she's going to talk about in her videos, which is really smart, very organized and everything like that. And I was like, oh, that's what I need. As soon as I saw her with it, like, and I've seen her with it before, but, you know, I've been sitting in my sewing room for the last, like, two hours wanting to get something accomplished. And, and I just, I'm in one of those rut kind of moods. And here she is. She has her little rolling assistant. And I was like, ah, I have to have this. I need to go buy one, you know, or I need to go online and shop for one. And I stopped myself, I'm like, why do I think like that? Why do I think I need something new to accomplish something that's already in the queue, something that's already old, essentially? And uh, so, you know, instead of going on Amazon or Joanne.com or something like that, I kind of stopped myself and I focused on something that I could accomplish without having to maybe bring out 
like supplies. I think that's my biggest um, sort of limiting factor when I want to work on a project is, you know, I, I usually put it away. You know, if I'm in the middle of it and I get stuck, I put it in a bag and I put it away, right? Don't look at it for a while, kind of walk away from it. And then I get to the point where I'm like in this kind of mood tonight where I'm like, I want to do something. I've been working on Pat Sloan's Traffic Jam, which is a great scrappy quilt along. And I'm like right at the last part. I think I literally need one more of these blocks. And then I need to cut the sashing and the cornerstones and piece it all together and I'm done. But I'm like bored of it, right? I'm tired of looking at these scraps. Because I have a lot of scraps, a lot of scraps. I mean, like, so there's all those. And then I have literally stacks of them left. I mean, like, they're all on my ironing board right now. And while there's a really great variety of them, there are a lot of the same types of colors. I've noticed, well, because I had a lot. I like big sections of fabric of certain colors. And so I was like, oh, I'll just cut it all up. You know, I had like a third of a yard of some fabrics. And I was like, yeah, two and a half inch squares. I won't get that many out of it. And like 700 squares later, <laughs> I have like, I have like, like these magenta colored ones. I have so many different types of like these fuchsia magenta colored um, fabrics. And I was just like, oh, after a while. Anyway, see, this is just a ranty video, so I'm probably going to go on lots of tangents. But you know what? I don't care. Because I watch other people on their YouTubes, and they go off on rants, and I enjoy that. So I'm just trying to get out my thoughts, trying to make a video, basically, because I want to stick stick with this YouTube thing. I, I think it's a lot of fun. It's really enjoyable. And I really want to end up you know, doing how-to videos and tutorials. I want to teach people how to do free motion quilting and things like that. And so that's why I'm making this video. I might edit some things out, who knows? I don't know. And <laughs> so Pat Sloan's video, yeah, she had her rolling assistant and it was just so weird how it was instantly like, I need it, I need a new thing. I need something to organize my life because that's why I'm not organized, right? I'm not organized enough because I don't have this shelf, I don't have the pegboard for my key, I don't have the rolling assistant, I don't have the, the plastic, you know, those plastic square project boxes that everybody's obsessed with. That's like, no, that's not why I'm not being productive, not because I don't have the thing, it's because I've hit a wall, I've hit a brick wall, and with, um, you know, adults with ADD or ADHD, I don't know, what level I'm at particularly with that um that's it's just that's what happens you want to do a thing you know how to do the thing you could do the thing very well but you'll get to this moment where you're just like nope not right now and I have to put it away I off I that's like my biggest thing is just pack it up put it in a bag and put it away you know, some people talk about maybe, you know, why don't you do your 10 minutes of sewing every day? And I do, I do do 10 minutes of sewing almost every single day. I would say probably four days out of the week. I, you know, I do work full time. And so sewing is technically my hobby. Um, so four days a week, I feel like is a good, a good amount. You know, every morning before I go to work, that's what I'll do is I'll sit and sew for a little bit. But the thing is, I have to have something out and ready to work on. Otherwise, nothing will get done. If it's not just out and ready for me to like, you know, wake up, grab my coffee, come in here in my sewing room and sit down and just, just sew, just sit and sew, not have to think about anything. I will often not do, I won't do any sewing because it's not easy. You know, it has to be able to, it has to be mindless almost basically. Um, at night when I get home from work, it, it is really, really, really hard to be motivated to be organized and ready to go on a sewing project. Mostly because I'm a manager at my work, so I, I'm having to be like that all day. For, you know, for eight hours a day, I'm in, what do I need to do next? Or, you know, trying to be organized, trying to get tasks accomplished. And so when I get home, I'm not, I'm a little bit physically tired, but mostly I'm mentally tired. And 
for me, even though sewing is relaxing and it is therapeutic and it is my hobby, it takes a lot of my brain power because I'm being creative and I, you know, I don't like to follow patterns. So, you know, right now I'm working on a quilt for somebody where I'm creating the pattern from scratch and I've hit a brick wall. Oh, surprise. <laughs> I hit a brick wall when, I co when it's coming to planning out the actual pattern and everything like that. So, you know, I'm just trying to find that motivation and, you know, just reaching out to anybody out there who's, you know, either you have ADD or you're just a, you know, hardcore procrastinator or just, I mean, I don't know, whatever. You're at that point where you're like, I'm done with this project or I really need some motivation. I'm going to tell you right now, you do not need to buy anything. You really don't. And, you know, sometimes Instagram and Pinterest, Facebook groups, those can be really great areas for motivation as well. But again, ugh, I don't know, maybe it's me, but I just get bogged down in just the sheer amount of stuff you can see online. The pictures, the patterns, the free patterns. There are, oh, there, there are so many free patterns. Do, Oh, just do one free pattern at a time. <laughs> when I first got started into quilting, you know, I was really excited because there's all this information online. You know, I first started with Missouri Star Quilt Company. I was like, wow, look at all these videos. Not only can I learn how to quilt, but I have so many free patterns that I could do. And I got to the point where I was, you know, researching free quilt patterns and downloading them and saving them and printing them out. And it became extremely tedious and it became over overwhelming because you can't save the free patterns for later you either have to print it off and do it right then and there or really limit to yourself to how many you print out or how many you download whatever because again it just becomes so overwhelming and that you know with the whole like not buying new stuff to become motivated it's because you're going to get bogged down really quickly with stuff with notions with fabric with threads, with the needle, decorative threads, and all this other stuff. You don't need it all. And I get it. Everybody's releasing this stuff. Like Lori Holt. She, I mean, she has some she has some really cute stuff. She has really cute books. I love her little thread, her chunky threads, her buttons, and all her little rick a rack and stuff like that that goes along with her her fabric lines and things like that. Really cute stuff. Um but if I bought everything that I liked from her, I would be broke. Uh, I would be broke. You know, I would never, ever, ever be able to have the time to make it all. There's no way. There is no way. And then, so you have to kind of stop yourself and realize like, you know, her full time 40 hour a week job is doing what she does, right? It's sewing, it's quilting and, you know, creating fabric and things like that. And right now, where I'm at in life, I cannot do quilting or sewing and YouTube full time. I just can't. I can't afford to do it. Um, I'm lucky because I still get to work in the sewing industry um, in a way. And so I am, you know, surrounded by it every day. But it's still customer service. You know what I mean? I'm still interacting with people all day, every day. And they come first. So I don't get to just sit and sew all day. I don't get to just sit and research or design or anything like that. I do have to great customers and thing, you know, and help them out basically. And so I just got to remember that it's okay to do a little bit, you know, just a little bit every day. And just because you don't have fabric under your needle for your 10 minutes of sewing, I don't think that's, there's other things I can do, right? I'm making this video, you know, just trying to get my brain to, I don't know, dump, I guess a brain dump is what you would call it. Um, you know, I revisited my blog that I started, like, I don't know, I think four years ago now. I started a quilting blog, posted on it maybe twice. Why don't I post on that more? You know, I like to write. I like to type. I um, should be writing more about my, my process. I want to get my thoughts down. And so I think that personally is what I need right now is to just let go of my thoughts, write things down. I uh, use my planner more, you know, I've been trying to have every day of the week, um, you know, for my 10 minutes of sewing, I've designated Mondays to be 
I think, uh, like, you know, planning what YouTube videos I want to do slash um, whatever I want to sell, like whatever I'm in the mood to sell or not sell, or maybe I want to read a book or something like that. Um, Tuesdays are to cutting fabric days. So on Tuesdays, my plan is, you know, if I have a project that I want to start in the near future, I, or, you know, like I have a pattern ready to go, then I need to cut the fabric for said project. And it's also work on this scrappy quilt as well. So if I write it down, it doesn't mean it's going to get done per se, but I feel like it, one, it commits it to my memory better. Um, I forget things little, I forget little things very easily, like little details, you know, they just kind of disappear or I won't remember them until like two weeks later. I'm like, oh yeah, I had to do that thing or yeah, I was going to work on that, you know, two weeks later. So it's like, well, okay, it's not gonna, really going to help me at this point. And so writing them down helps commit it to memory. It also, you know, creates a reference point, you know, if I have my planner that I'm, you know, referencing at, you know, periodically throughout the day, hopefully. Uh, it doesn't always happen. <laughs> if you don't use it, it's not really that helpful. Um, but yeah, just using my planner more. And I think, you know, you know, I went out and bought myself a happy planner. I bought my first one last year and I really liked it. It was a big jumbo one. And this year I can only get like the regular happy planner, which is still a good size, I guess. But I can't let that be the thing, you know, oh, well, my planner's not the right size, so I can't be motivated. And it's like, that's an excuse. That's a cop out. And so I'm trying to, I think, I guess 2020 is my year of no more excuses, no more cop outs. Um, you know, if I am struggling to actually do something because of my attention abilities, then just do something else. You know, if I, you know, in my head, I might want to sew you know, a particular project, but when I get in my sewing room, I'm like, uh, maybe I just want to type a blog post or something, or, you know, sit here and do a ranty vlog. I don't know. I don't think I, I can't, I gotta stop limiting myself to being productive as having fabric under the needle. Um, so that's what I'm going to strive to do. And that's it. I think that's all I wanted to say, really. Maybe I'll post this. Maybe I won't, but I guess the summary is if, you know, if you've hit a brick wall with motivation or creativity, you're not alone, especially if you're a seller. I think, I think, I don't know if we're the worst ones. I don't know. I'm not a paper, paper crafter or a scrapbooker. You know, if you guys are out there, are you, are you the same way you guys project starters, but not finishers? <laughs> How many scrapbook pages have you started and never, you know, finished off? I don't know. I feel like quilters, I don't know. I feel like we're the biggest ones just because there's so, there's so much out there. And it, I mean, like, so this pattern behind me, if you just change the colors of it, you have a completely different quilt and you could, you know, change just the center colors or you could change the strips on the outside or the sashing or the cornerstone. You change one little thing and you've changed the whole, the whole look of it. So we are definitely project starters, but at least we're not alone, right? Or I think, I don't think there's a quilter out there that starts a project, finishes it, and then moves on to the next one. And if you're out there, I want to know, I want to meet you. You are like a wonder person who actually finishes their quilting projects. Um, but you guys don't need to buy anything. Don't buy stuff just because you feel unmotivated. Uh, we've, gotten to that point in our culture where it's you know treat yourself even even you old you know even little old ladies even ladies in the 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s you guys have gotten wrapped into that mentality too of just you know oh you know I'm not gonna take it with me might as well buy it now oh I need you know I don't need it but I want it and you know if you got the money if you got the budget for it go for it you know no judgment here but you know there's a difference between, you know, saving up and treating yourself to some new fabric or some new notion or something like that, um, as opposed to you're kind of broke and you shouldn't be spending your money on this. 
but you're stuck mentally or stuck creatively and so you're just buying it to I don't know spark your motivation to light a fire under your butt to get to sewing and we all know it's not going to happen you know you can go buy everything you can buy every piece of fabric you've ever encountered and it's not going to make you a more productive sewer or productive quilter so I don't know get a journal start writing get a planner start planning do something that you know a planner is nice because you can jot down all your thoughts in it. There's pages for notes. What I like about the Happy Planner is that you can kind of add pages into it very easily. There's other planners like that too, like Free Room Finders. I'm not a Happy Planner affiliate or anything like that. I just, I think they're cute. But what's nice about that is that you can use it as a creative stepping stone. Like I like, you know, I like stickers, you know, I grew up with that, you know, I'm a nineties kid. So we were all about the Lisa Frank stickers and we had sticker clubs and all that good stuff. And the happy planner is fun because you can add to it. You know, you can really kind of decorate it the way you like it. And so when you're feeling stuck creatively, you know, creatively, creatively, uh, just sitting down and throwing some stickers on there, getting some cute markers and drawing and decorating. You don't have to spend a ton of money for that kind of stuff. A lot of people have that in their crafting room already anyway. And so that's a good way to kind of plan things out. And just because you don't stick to the plan exactly, you know, at least it's written down and you can cross things off when you do accomplish them. And for me personally, that's, that's a really helpful tool to have. So, but, you know, buying another shelf or the, the boxes, the, the project boxes, I don't know what, why they're really cool. Don't get me wrong. I love the plastic project boxes, but they, they get really expensive. They're so expensive. I did find them for $5 at Walmart yesterday though. So, but then that's just more stuff in the room accumulating and I don't want to bring in more stuff until I get some of the other stuff out. So I just want to sew. Sew, 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 sew. I just need everything out. And I still don't feel motivated with this whole video. 20 minutes. See my hair? It's growing out really bad. I have lots of grays. I've had gray hair since high school. But uh, this year I'm turning 30. Woohoo! Exciting stuff. I don't feel, I don't know, a lot of people will get like, oh my god, I'm older. And I don't feel that way. I feel like excited. I feel excited for the next year. But I guess 30 is still considered young for most people. But I'm excited. But anyway, I feel, I guess, a little bit more motivated. I don't know. I didn't really talk about anything. Don't buy stuff. Stop buying stuff.